good day, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sarkit Elizabeth Brennus, and my report is all about the Japanese flying squid. The calamari is from a Japanese flying squid known for its tenderness and nice taste. It's only harvested twice a year, making it very exclusive. Most of the catches go to Japan and South Korea, where where it is heavily sought after by top restaurants and hotels. It is gin caught, making it ocean wise recommended. To start off, I'm going to have an introduction of the said species, starting from its taxonomic classification. Next is, it, is the description and distribution. Then I will be tackling the flying mechanism and how it works, its behavior, mating, reproduction, and life cycle, as well as the environmental and economic importance of the Japanese flying squid. Next is the capture, where I've listed some, if not all, of the fishing gears used to capture the Japanese flying squid. And last but not the least, is the production of the said species. Todorotus pacificus, commonly known as Japanese flying squid and or the Japanese cob squid. It is a mouse and it belongs to the order Cephalopoda and family of Masterpidae. It is available as clean drinks or tubes, or frozen, or wild and it's jig caught and it's caught in the sea of japan and process of china adult squids have few distinguishing features they have a mantle which encloses the visceral mass they also have two things a side one used for jet propulsion eight arms and two tentacles that have suction cups at the back in between their arms is a mouth commonly called the beak inside the mouth is a tooth tongue item called badula Japanese flying squid have three hearts. They also have ink sacs, which is used for a defense mechanism. They are comfortable in a range of temperatures and can survive almost freezing 2 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. The Japanese flying squid isn't as well known as many others out there. They have also distinct features to this particular species. You notice know, rings at the back of the head. It's used to determine how old they are. They are very small and light like squid as well. Females can grow up to 50 centimeters. Males are smaller, and both sexes manifest their typical squid morphology. Their fast on diet, which is useful since they're predators dining on fish and crustaceans. They are short lived as they live for only one year. Within this year of life, though, the Japanese flying squid matures from larval form, then feed, grow, migrate, and then at the end of their lives, they congregate in mating grounds where they reproduce. When they reproduce, they die. You will find the Japanese flying squid in the northern parts of the Pacific Ocean near Korea and Japan. They can be found all the way to the coast. This includes both China and Russia. They've also been located along the Beijing Strait and into the areas of Alaska and Canada. They prefer cooler areas of water to live in. In fact, they won't be found in waters that are more than 27 degrees Celsius. They tend to live very close to the surface, so neither open waters or coastal areas. Now, for the diet and feeding, the behavior of the JFS is hard to identify. We don't know much about them in their natural habitat. At the same time though, we can't learn much from them in captivity. This one of species of squid that tends not to do well in such an environment. They suffer from stress so they don't eat or act like they normally would. The main food source of the Japanese flying squid is a variety of small fish. They will also consume other types of squids out there if sources, sources are short. Fishermen have learned to check their nets often too, otherwise they'll discover their catch is far less because the largest squid have consumed the smaller ones that are in there with them. Now for the fly, neither its fins nor arms are the JFS primarily tools for travel. Instead, they race through the water by jet propulsions. Mantle first, during sustained swimming with limbs dangling behind them. This is done by taking water into the mantle and expelling it expelling it through a siphon. Other squid also propel themselves in the soaring manner. Todorotus pacificus just happened to get the cool name. In addition to zip zipping around the water, the squid sometimes use also use their propulsion system to briefly glide through the air. It's not a common sight, so it was generally believed that this behavior was used to avoid predators, just like the so-called so-called flying fish do, but some researchers now think that leaping into the air actually allows squid to boost their travel efficiency using rapid succession of photos, succession of photos of squid reaching the water surface. They estimate that the velocity to be five times faster when moving through air.
You can see from the pictures here how the Japanese planes could propel themselves out of the water. Now, the behavior. Japanese populations are highly migratory, moving to forage and reproduce. The screen are found from 0 to 500, 500 meters in depth, but typically feed at depths of 0 to 200 meters. And in waters with temperatures ranging from 5 to 10, 27 degrees Celsius. Often forming large aggregations around ocean fronts, sea mounts, and guards, where food is abundant. These squid have migration patterns descending to or near the sea bottom during the day to feed on benthic and epibenthic prey. At night, the squid ascend to feed in the upper 50 meters of the water column and may approach the surface. Trawl fishermen potentially can adjust fishing depths based on the squid behavior to their advantage. Jigging, which catches squid closer to the surface, typically practiced at night. Mating and spawning have not been observed in nature but have been, have been studied in laboratory. Males mature first and pass off their sperm to sexually immature females, who store the genetic material and eventually use it to fertilize their eggs. The sperm are housed in spermatophores, structures containing a sperm mass, a spring-like ejaculatory apparatus, and a cement body. It's like a glue to help the sperm mass adhere to the female. The male clutches the female and uses his hectocotylus, the fourth right arm, designed for the sword of handle, to grab some spermatophores and stick them onto the female. It's the ejaculation device contained in the spermatophores that ultimately send the sperm mass whirring through the female skin. In short, it turns the Hectocotylus into the female's mental cavity where fertilization usually occurs. Reproduction takes place at the end of their life. They will migrate to the location for mating, which has been ident identified as one of the three locations. One, the East China Sea, second, Kyushu, and the Sea of Japan. Spawning takes place from January to March. The females can create up to three to four thousand eggs at a time which they will deposit into our ocean. The females tend to deposit their eggs in the same location where they were born themselves. This is a fascinating phenomenon that continues to puzzle researchers. Now, female males mature earlier than females and begin waiting with immature females about 2-3 to three weeks before the females have matured. Spermatozoa remain viable for several weeks until spawning takes place. Females are thought to spawn about pipeline near the continental shelf and upper slope at depths of 100 to 500 meters. Females have a total lifetime fecundity of about 100,000 to 200,000 eggs which they lay in one or more egg masses that look like gelatinous balls. The balls are almost neutrally buoyant and typically float in pipeline interface until the eggs hatch. Pair larvae hatch in 4 to 6 days at 18 degrees to 90 degrees Celsius in a believed to actively swim towards the surface. Once hatching is complete, the egg mass deteriorates. It only takes about 5 days for this new offspring to hatch as well. It's extremely fast and it also results in the majority of them being born instead of the eggs consumed by predators. Young juveniles are transported north by oceanic currents from their hatching grounds to their feeding grounds. These new offspring consume algae and bacteria as well as more organisms until they get big. Then they start feeding on various types of fish. Prey items include including finfish, crustaceans, gastropods, tetanus, cephalopods, inc including conspecifics. Now, genetic analysis of population structure is somewhat limited, but they suggest the existence of two distinct breeding groups, the fall stock, the winter, summer, and spring stocks combined. Fall spawners also show some unique life history and characteristics, characteristics such as comparatively large body size and low individual fecundity and high Hydrographic conditions may keep larvae within the central and southern patch of Japan. The fall and winter stocks support large scale fisheries, while the summer and spawning stock supports only small scale fisheries. Now, here is a diagram of its life cycle. I've said it in the reproduction part, so I'm not gonna say it again. Now, for this diagram, it shows the tropic level, but not only that, it also shows the prey of the squid and its predators. Predators include finfish, 
uh, like dolphin fish, chalk mackerel, Japanese jack mackerel, skip jack tuna, and marine mammals like northern fur seals, tooth whales, and baleen whales. Its major major predator, however, on the other hand, is on the on the other hand is fermi. I mean, other than humans, it's it also depicts the ecological importance of the Japanese flying squid as it has a keystone role in the ecosystem as many predators put on them and they also regulate the numbers of their prey which provides an ecological balance. Jeff has a source of livelihood, source of food and because of this it also is being imported and exported. Now, the high amounts of Japanese flying squid are consumed in both Japan and China. Therefore, the commercial fishing for them is very high. They use it for sushi, which is a big part of their diet there. The abundant amounts are also shipped to other countries for consumption, including the US. They're mainly captured in the first three months of the year. However, to keep up with the demand for it, the process continues all year long. The following jiggers, demersal trawls, Per scenes, set nets are some examples of fishing gears used to capture the squid. Now, this is a per scene and set net. Now, China plays a pivotal role in the global squid supply chain. Based on the ocean outcomes preliminary research, the combined importance of China to the global squid supply chain and of squid to China's seafood industry is illustrated by the fact that China has become the world's largest fishing squid fishing and processing country with three supply chain components. One is the domestic harvest from the coastal fishery in China's EEZ. Two, China's harvest in its distant water fisheries shipped back to China for processing. And three, importing through international trade. Each year, over 1 million tons of squid get caught or imported by China for domestic consumption. Export and processing, re-exporting. In 2012, imports, domestic fisheries, and distant water fisheries each accounted for roughly 300 to 400 kilotons. Total Chinese squid exports and re-exports represent over one third of China's total supply and have significantly grown since 2012, recently stabilizing about 440,000 metric tons in 2015 and 2016 in table 6. In 2016, China's export to 11 countries accounted for 84% of its total squid export, squid exports, including squid that may have been imported, reprocessed, and exported on figure 8. Japan is the largest importing country representing its long-standing consumption market with the other traditional export markets including EU countries, US, Korea, and Taiwan. Meanwhile, Southeast Asian countries, namely Thailand and the Philippines, have received dramatic increases of squid exports from China in recent years. In 2016, the export volume squid from China to Thailand and the Philippines have increased eightfold since 2012. 2012, with the main origin of exports being the Fujian province. Russia's squid ex import volume from China decreased in 2016 due to unfavorable, unfavorable impacts on domestic political economic policies. Here are photos showing some samples of the JFS sold in the market. Initially, Todorodi Specificus was processed into a dry product or surume for both domestic consumption and export. But with the expansion of fisheries, other, other production lines evolved, such as raw squid, shijimi, a cook and processed product, sakita, frozen and canned squid. Now I'm done with the topic of the Japanese flying squid. And here, here on this slide uh, is squid found in the Philippines. There are quite a number of squid species found in the Philippines, but I've only chosen four common species. These are the European squid, the long fin squid, the big fin reef squid, and the Eurotiothis marski, fished in Palaon waters, commonly named as Sputnik by fishermen due to its body shape like a lot, likened to a slim rock. A rock. And this is all of my report. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good night.